Okay, what is up guys? Uh, another video for you today. And what I wanna cover in today's video, they did a Discover Your Ford live stream. They do one every month. They did one uh, last week. I'm uh, channeling my inner Errol with my plaid work shirt here so that you don't have to sit through the 45 minute live stream even if you can find it online, which is very hard to do. So the point of this video is to just condense all that important info that we learned in the live stream into a nice little bite-sized video to just give you the highlights. Uh, so let's dive right in. So the topic for this Discover Your Ford live stream was technology, uh, which admittedly about the last third of what Errol spoke about in the live stream was more like safety features, but I guess that is tied into tech. So. This video is about tech in the F-150 Lightning. Uh, next month they're going to talk about charging, which I'm really excited for that one. Uh, and I will do another summary slash live stream reaction video, so be sure to subscribe. That way you get a notification when that video goes up. Um, and then after that, they haven't really specified uh, any more of these live streams. I don't know if they will continue doing them. So Errol starts off by reiterating that the F-150 is the best-selling truck, best-selling car for the last 40 years. They love to say that every live stream. Errol was standing in front of a Rapid Red Lariat Lightning. Uh, the Rapid Red actually looked great. First thing he dives into is talking about phone as a key. Now, I like to tailor the content for this channel to the pro Lightning trim level because that's the, the trim level I'm interested in. Right off the bat, he mentions that with phone as a key, you can get up to f use four different phones as digital keys for one Lightning, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, you can lock and unlock the vehicle, you can start and stop the vehicle, but then after he shared all this cool info, he said in order to use phone as a key, you have to have um, the Ford Pass app on your phone because it communicates via Bluetooth with your truck, and you also have to have Ford Copilot 360 Active 2.0, uh, and I know that's a mouthful, and we'll get into the different levels of tech and driver assistance later in this video. Um, but unfortunately, that Ford Copilot Active 2.0 is only available on the Platinum. It's standard on the Platinum trim, and it's available on the Lariat trim. So for us pro folks, we will not be using phone as a key. Uh, however, you will still get the Ford Pass app, which adds some functionality. And so if your phone were to die using phone as a key, uh, again, not that this is going to apply to us, uh, that's when you would just use that secure number pad on the side of the truck to unlock your vehicle if you didn't have a key fob and your phone died. So then he got into the meat and potatoes of tech in the Lightning, in my opinion, which is the big infotainment screens. On our pro trim level, we're gonna get a 12 inch landscape screen. On the higher trims, you're gonna get a 15 and a half inch uh, portrait screen. The 12 inch landscape screen, man, that's a mouthful, is gonna come with Sync 4. And he starts off by saying that Android Auto and Apple CarPlay will both work wirelessly with the Sync 4. Um, but what I noticed is that with Apple CarPlay is the example he used uh, during his live stream. They only ever show it taking up about 60% of the screen, like the left 60%, and then the other 40% is always some other, you know, like it's telling you about your charge level or it's telling you about your navigation. And so I have to wonder, is there a way to get Android Auto or Apple CarPlay taking up the whole 12 inch screen? Or is it always just gonna be like a 60-40 split thing? That's the type of thing we won't learn until uh, people get their hands on these. But if you have an F-150, like a newer F-150 that has Sync 4, comment below and tell me how that works. Um, if that's like something you can choose and format or if you're always stuck with a 60-40 split. Tell me in the comments below. Uh, other interesting things that I noticed, I did not know you can tie the lightning in with your Alexa voice assistant and I guess use it as Alexa. There's also a Ford assistant built in that kind of ties in with the digital owner's manual and I guess it's just uh, kind of a built in expert to the infotainment system that can help you troubleshoot issues with your truck uh, or the tech in your truck uh, because for many people this might be their first electric vehicle or their first Ford so that's a cool feature. That's pretty much all he said about Sync 4. The 12 inch screen looked beautiful. Then he went on to Sync 4A, which is the gonna be on your portrait 15 and a half inch screen. 
Really, the overall gist I got is just that it's slightly smarter than Sync 4. So like Sync 4A adds in along the bottom these dash cards is what he was calling them. And I guess they're just kind of routines like every day if it learns that you're calling a certain person on your way home from work or on your way to work or if you're punching in the same navigation over and over, the system will learn that and put it uh, at the bottom of that 15 inch screen. But again, they never show like Android Auto or Apple CarPlay taking up all 15 and a half inches. So it's another kind of split uh, situation there. He mentioned that you change your drive mode from the 15 and a half inch infotainment screen, uh, but he did not mention that with the Sync 4 system. So I have to wonder, will we be choosing our drive modes on the Pro Lightning uh, from the 12 inch instrument cluster screen? Or will we be doing that with a dial somewhere uh, within the vehicle? I don't know. Um, also on the Sync 4A system is, he said there's games on that screen to help pass the time, I guess if you're charging uh, at a public charger and it's gonna take a little while. But they were all games. He didn't mention anything about apps uh, like Netflix or YouTube so that you could like watch content while you charge, which other electric vehicles have. So the overall gist I got is that if you plan on towing at all, the tow tech package is gonna be a necessity for you because it is gonna give you more accurate range calculations for when you're towing and when you would need to charge on a trip. Things included in the tow tech package, uh, the onboard scales, and then the hitch will tell you what the tongue weight is of what you're towing. And so I would imagine you'd be having a lot more range anxiety if you don't have the tow technology package. So just something to remember. Uh, then he talked about Power My Trip, which again, it's a built-in trip planner that helps you get from A to B, tells you charging stations along the way. But again, I would imagine this tool is less accurate depending on what tech you have in your truck. If you don't have the onboard scales in the bed, or if you don't have the tow tech package, I would have to imagine that any trips it's telling you, you know, how can it possibly know if you're going to make it to your destination if it doesn't know how much you're towing or hauling. So just something to keep in mind. Then we get into the weeds on the Ford Copilot system, which there's like three tiers. So on the Pro trim, you're gonna get the Ford Copilot 360 2.0, period. That's what you get. And that includes pre-collision assistance, pre-collision assistance with automatic emergency braking, lane keeping, uh, and auto high beam headlamps. That's it for Ford Copilot 360 2.0. Then on higher trims, you'll be able to get Ford Copilot 360 Assist 2.0, which is different because it offers more features, including intelligent adaptive cruise control, evasive steering assistance, and intersection assistance, which actually I had never heard of, but seems cool. It'll detect if you're making a dangerous left turn in front of another vehicle. And then finally, on the upper trims, you're going to get Ford Copilot 360 Active 2.0, which includes parallel parking assistance and parallel parking, like exiting a parallel parking space assistance. Uh, and it comes with Blue Cruise. This will offer hands-free driving on 130,000 miles of divided highway, but Errol reminded us that those that range of divided highway is ever-growing, so by the time you take delivery of your Lightning, it might be more than that. So it uses an infrared camera that's just to the right of the steering wheel. Um, to make sure that your eyes are on the road. If not, I guess it'll beep at you and make you put your hands back on the steering wheel for safety. And finally, he talked about PowerUp software updates, and this actually was something that intrigued me. Uh, he said those happen via the cloud. It can be delivered via Wi-Fi or your Ford Pass app, so that makes me think even if you're off camping, well, if you're somewhere without Wi-Fi but with cell service on your cell phone, you would still be able to download your over-the-air software update via your phone, which sounded pretty cool. And he said that it gives access to new driving experiences, including new drive modes. So I found that interesting. I was thrilled, as you remember, to find out that the Pro Lightning would have four different drive modes, normal, sport, tow haul, and off-road. And now he's making it sound like they could, you know, uh, I've heard never buy a product based on unfulfilled promises uh, because they might never happen. But cool to know that you could even inherit new drive modes after taking delivery of your Lightning via software updates. Like uh, I would really love to see a snow mode because uh, I've got snow where I live. And then maybe an eco mode that kind of limits your acceleration and helps prolong your battery range. So that's pretty much it. So I hope that I boiled down 
anything important from the live stream into this video. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something new or you heard about a cool feature that you didn't know about, go ahead and put it in the comments below. And thanks for watching.